Hello, I'm Alex Smola, VP and Distinguished Scientist for AWS AI. Let's talk today a little bit about Dive into Deep Learning, our work in making sure that everybody has the opportunity to learn about deep learning easily at home, wherever they are. Now let's look a little bit first at how machine learning is growing. It's becoming rapidly the center of innovation for many, many products. Anything from self-driving cars to robotics, to contact centers, to logistics, they all need machine learning. If you order something online, it's quite likely that products are going to be recommended to you using machine learning. A fraud detector will detect whether you're actually the person you claim you are. Machine learning will be used in logistics to decide how and where to store the objects. And maybe a self-driving car might be delivering it. And if there's any problem, the contact center might very well also be optimized and automated to help you support your requirements the best. So this is really ubiquitous. And it turns out that Many, many companies are using machine learning now for their successful work. So tens of thousands of customers have chosen AWS for that purpose. And that's more than twice as many customers using machine learning on AWS than any other cloud provider. But obviously, it's not just our customers who do machine learning, but we use it too. So for instance, we use this in the context of recommendation of products. When you come to amazon.com and you search for maybe a Kindle case, well, you're going to use and enjoy the benefits of machine learning to recommend you the right one. As I already mentioned before, in the fulfillment centers then, machine learning is used for good logistics. And if you ask Alexa what time it is, she will sometimes tell you useful information. And so basically personal digital assistants quite crucially rely on machine learning to interact and give you good information. In the end, if you don't want objects delivered to you by hand, well, maybe Primair will go and you know, fly a drone to you and drop off what you just ordered. So our mission at AWS is to put machine learning into the hands of every developer and scientist. Why? Because we want our customers to succeed. Because if they succeed, they succeed with us. And this makes everybody happy, right? It delights their customers. It delights our customers. It obviously also means that as they are successful, they will grow on AWS. So for that, we have the broadest and deepest set of AI and machine learning services. So there are new ones being added every day. And there are over 200 new features that were launched last year alone. So that's more than every second day, one new feature. That means there's really something there for everybody. It also means that if you want to have a managed solution, you can have that through SageMaker, in which case, if you don't want to have to worry about allocating machines and so on, you can use SageMaker to get low total cost of ownership machine learning environments. Now, of course, having just machine learning isn't the full story. You actually need the entire supporting ecosystem. So what that means is you need to be able to have compute, databases, storage, networking, analytic capabilities. You need all this functionality to allow you to succeed in the cloud. On the AWS machine learning side specifically, well, at the very top, we have the higher level AI services. That's services like vision, speech, well, conversion mechanisms from text to speech and speech to text, but also conversion mechanisms from one language to another or mechanisms to allow you to understand things, to search, to converse with your customers 
or to personalize what you're recommending to them. One level below, the Stage Maker, which includes tools for annotating objects. So that's Ground Truth. There's a model marketplace. And then there is a great many systems that within SageMaker that allow you, for instance, to model how your system is working, whether your models are okay, whether training works, there's a compiler in it. So all those services in the middle allow you to build your own systems, but with appropriate support from AWS. Now, if you want to go it all on your own, we are there for you too. The three major frameworks are well supported and effective on AWS, so that's TensorFlow, MXNet, and PyTorch. But it also means that we support specialized libraries, such as the Deep Graph library, if you want to do very large scale distributed reasoning on graphs, or if you want to do computational biology. We have the widest range of GPUs and CPUs on EC2. And if that's not enough, well, we have Elastic Inference and Inferentia. The latter is our inference chip. Now, if you want to program the networks entirely yourself and even design the chip architecture, well, we have FPGAs. In short, what you can do is you can succeed on AWS from the very top of fully managed services to designing your own chips. Now, as I said, our mission at AWS is to put machine learning into ha the hands of every developer and scientist. That means providing the tools, but also teaching how to use machine learning. So you might wonder, well, this sounds like a solved problem, right? After all, there are a lot of books and you know you can pick those up and you can learn about machine learning, deep or not, or kernels or graphical models and whatever. And if you'll read this, well, you'll get a pretty good idea. But there's a problem. They don't come with code. So what that means is that you may very well have a good theoretical understanding how things work, but you might not be able to actually put this into practice. Okay, so you say, well, but you know, there are all those repos out there. I can go to GitHub and whatever. I have blog posts. You can go to Fast AI or Strata or Towards Data Science or even the AWS Machine Learning blog, right? And you can read up on how to do things. There are recipes for everything out there. The trouble is, well, this may give you operational knowledge, but not so much math. So you may not necessarily understand very much what it actually does. And it's that combination of understanding and the ability to execute, to do, that really makes a difference. And so since there was nothing out there, we decided, okay, well, in the end, we have to do it ourselves and actually write a book on it. So Dive into Deep Learning covers math, code, and examples all within the same package. So calling it a book is actually weird because there's code in it, but you don't have to just, you know, look at the pages and retype the code. You can actually just execute it through notebooks. So this is very different from most other textbooks, which may have a supplement of maybe, you know, 10 or 20 or maybe 50 Jupyter notebooks. In our case, the book is the code, is the text, is the math, is the examples, is the diagrams. So in other words, you will be able to execute to get all the content, all the figures, all the graphs through our code. There's nothing hidden. It contains a self-contained tutorial on statistics, linear algebra, optimization, machine learning basics. And there are 175 Jupyter notebooks, including how to do GPUs, how to do multi-machine computation. And it's not very surprising that by now, over 100 universities are using it as a textbook, including Shanghai Jiao Tong. Now, if you want to use it for your class or maybe use it in your company, well, you can watch the videos, there are slides, everything's available, and it's available in English and Chinese. Now, when we started, we decided to use MXNet as the framework to illustrate on how to do deep learning. 
And as a matter of fact, this is still the framework that covers the entire book. However, since we got many, many requests by our customers who said, well, can you add PyTorch or maybe TensorFlow? As of one month ago, and in TensorFlow's case, as of one week ago, we now have TensorFlow and PyTorch available for at least the very first one third of the book. More support is coming, not the least thanks to the very, very high energy and enthusiasm of the community. Now, what I just mentioned before, this is not everything. So we obviously have statistics, linear models, the multi-layer perceptron. By the way, the entire book can be purchased also in Chinese. We explain backpropagation, convolutional networks, how to do modern deep learning, sequence models, transformers, attention, optimization, sentiment analysis, recommender systems. So all those things are there. So if you want to be able to use this and understand it well, you can use both the code or you can purchase the book and they are, one is generated from the other. So, okay, after so much description, well, let me maybe briefly explain how this actually works. So if we look at the book, well, you know, you can download all the notebooks and you can change languages. And well, if you look into one of the chapters, here's for instance, a description of the multi-layer perceptron. There's text there. There's math there, there are diagrams, you get theorems. Now, this sounds all very nice, but actually the most useful way is to illustrate this in a live case. Let's have a look. So here we have a concise implementation of the multi-layer perceptron. And that's available in MXNet or PyTorch. And so now you can compare how to implement that MLP in MXNet or in PyTorch or in TensorFlow. And you'll see exactly how those frameworks run and you will see that, well, they all kind of do the same thing. Okay, well, that sounds great. Um, let's actually check this out in practice. So this is the very same notebook that we saw before from PyTorch. And I just loaded it up into a Jupyter notebook and I can now go and execute it. Okay, so now we define our network and then we train. And if we were to wait for about 20 seconds now, we would actually see this network training quite happily and you can already see it progress. And after about 20 seconds, it's done and it would have trained a multi-layer perceptron with one hidden unit. Okay, so we're almost there. So D2L transparently takes care of data loading and other common routines, and it does that for every framework. Okay, let's go back to the talk. It's mobile friendly. Of course, everything's open source. And you can download the PDF version of the book for free. Okay, by now it's no longer 614 pages. By now we are at 980 pages. Probably by the time you see this talk, we might have crossed the thousand page boundary. If you want to watch the class that we taught at UC Berkeley, it's all freely available on YouTube. And I presume that there are some copies floating around for you too, just in case this is more easy for you to access. There's a great number of universities all across the world that are teaching from it. Yeah, some of them. But of course, I'm just the person who's there and talks about it. This entire thing wouldn't have been possible without a lot of people who work on it. Aston, Rachel, Mu, Zach, Shuai, Yi, and Brent, they all contributed. And of course, also community members like Anirudh and Yuan, 
who helped with the PyTorch and TensorFlow ports. So we really owe it to them and 200 other contributors who've really made D2L what it is. Now, since it's a community effort, we want you to enjoy it. And if you really enjoy it, we would also appreciate it if you enjoyed it so much that you would help contribute back. And so with that, thank you very much. And I hope you found this useful.